Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to day nine of a fortnight of film, a vlogging marathon where I shoot a different roll of film every single day. It's been a heck of a ride so far. I've done E6, I've done ECN2, I've done C41, and I've done black and white. Today is going to be another roll of E6 medium format. I asked you guys which roll of expired E6 film you'd like to see me shoot with, Provia 100F or Ektachrome 100 Plus, and by a vote of 64%, you guys chose Ektachrome 100 Plus. You might notice that I'm wearing a sweater today, and that's because the temperature finally took a dip. I believe the high today is going to be plus 5 Celsius with a low of minus 2 Celsius. So right now it's 0 Celsius, and it's only going to increase by 5 degrees today. Now what does that mean for photography? Well, first off, switching lenses is out of the question now. I run the risk of fogging up the inside of my camera or the back of the lens, and we don't want that. Now, zero degrees isn't too cold, so I don't have to worry about climatizing the camera before I open up the back when I get home or anything like that. Um, but once it gets into the minus 10 range and below, I'm going to have to start thinking about giant Ziploc bags and acclimating the camera to the indoors once I'm done for the day. Today I plan on heading back to Kensington where I shot Polaroids a few days ago with black and white and you know this time I'm gonna have color which is really great because there is some really colorful areas of Kensington. As I mentioned this ectochrome has expired. It expired in November of 2007 and what does that mean? Well that means I should be overexposing by at least a stop I can almost guarantee this was not refrigerated, so it has lost some of its sensitivity. I have heard in the comments recently that they don't think that the one stop per decade rule is an actual thing, and I know for a fact that they haven't tested it for themselves, because if they did, they would find that if your film has not been refrigerated and it has expired for 10 years or more, you should really be using that one stop rule. I've tested it in black and white, I've tested it in color, and I've tested it in E6, and the results are consistent. While the one stop per every 10 years is not an exact science, overexposing expired film is consistently helpful. That being said, E6 film is extremely fussy, even when it's fresh, so I will be bracketing those shots that I think really matter which is going to cut down on my total frames. I'm only starting out with 10 frames, and what I'm likely going to end up with is about a third of that, because I tend to double up on my exposures on about a third of my shots. I don't do it with all of them, but I do it on the ones that I think really matter or have a high ratio of light to dark. If I'm working with even lighting, there's a lot more forgiveness, but if I've got something that's backlit, I'm more likely to bracket. Nothing to do now though, but get this camera loaded and head on out. It is an overcast day today. For some reason the meter would only park for half an hour. So I'm making a quick loop around and then I'm gonna to have to find somewhere else to park. There's a ton of artwork like this in Kensington. And I just want to photograph it all, but making art out of other people's art only goes so far. All right, I'm back in the car driving. I don't know why it said two hour parking on the sign, but the meter would only let me put in half an hour. So I'm gonna find somewhere else to repark. Easiest thing to do is just head to the other side of Kensington, maybe somewhere I haven't walked yet, 
I mean, ideally somewhere I haven't walked yet. And see how that goes. So far, I'm three shots in. And like I said before, it's hard to not just photograph street art because there's so much of it here. It's so colorful and incredibly beautiful. It would be nice if I could find some parking that wasn't restricted or neighborhood only or some parking that wasn't paid, but I think it's wishful thinking. I'm, I stand corrected. Two hour parking, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. No payment required. Every time I'm a bit of a pessimist, the universe likes to prove me wrong. There are so many trees. Or, so many trees. There are so many leaves on the ground right now. I, it's perfect timing for me to get these shots because it's supposed to snow this afternoon. I'm actually reparked on the same road that I parked on on one of the first days when I photographed the Peace Bridge. Alrighty, time to keep on keeping on. There is very little light right now. Um, to give you an idea, most of my shots have been 1 over 30 or 1 over 60 at f3.5 or f4. I actually dropped my light meter, but it was in the dirt, so it's okay. Now, the other day when I was here with the Polaroids, I came across a couple of artists that were just finishing up on that panda shot and just starting on another. I'm kind of curious, so I'm going to take a look. So there's the panda shot that they finished right before I got here. And just a couple of garages down. Wow. That's even more amazing. Here's the other one they did. That's incredible. I'd like to get a photo of it, but I don't want to just get a photographic stencil of it. So I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna waste a frame because there's nothing really in the background or nothing really I can do. But I said I'd come back. So I wanted to make sure I came back. NASA Rimba underscore. I'm assuming that's their Instagram. And some people are so talented. Okay, considering it's getting a little nippy out, I really enjoyed this walk. I've got one shot left, and I know exactly what I want to photograph. I decided to not shoot it at the time, just in case I saw something else. But. Now that I'm down to my last frame, that's what I want to photograph. Unless, of course, I see something else. But I might not. I actually tried to photograph it with the Berlin Kino film, and it was one of the shots that didn't turn out. So, um, it's a colorful subject, so it kind of works out anyway. And that's it. I got all my shots. I only did one duplicate. I didn't even change the exposure on it. Um, what happened was, is I felt I pressed the shutter release very hard. And I think I might have shook the camera. All my shots have been 1 60th or 1 30th of a second. I think I might have had one at f4. And then the rest were at 3.5. 
So not uh, not the greatest depth of field, that's for sure. As always, I'm curious about expired film. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the exposure looks fine, but things still look like uh, garbage in the shadow detail. I mean, you can't predict how the film's been handled. In this case, November 2007 was 13 years ago, and then add on another two years. <coughs> I know, I really lay on the hand sanitizer. But yeah, another two years on top of that. That's 15-year-old film. I mean, it might have been left out in the hot sun. <laughs> but hey, at least it wasn't already shot, because it was wrapped up. Anyway, time to get this roll of film home and get it developed. All right guys, well this time I decided rather than trying to use the sous vide water, I was just gonna bite the bullet and run the sink at uh, about 100 Fahrenheit. It's turned out to be so much easier to do. It does waste a lot more water, but it's a lot less messy. Uh, just like the last time I did E6, the film has gotten off track. Not as bad, but uh, I gotta be careful. I've been flipping over the spool and making sure that uh, water gets washed from both ends. Seems to do a bit of a difference. Now, a couple of you have made some pretty good suggestions that I'm considering adding to my workflow, and I'm gonna try them today. The first is that I should be putting the spool on its side when I put it in the salad spinner, and maybe putting in a second spool for counterweight. Um, I'm just gonna stick it on its side and see what happens. The second measure is that the photo flow should go into its own container, so it's easier to clean everything else up. Now what they suggested was that I should put the photo flow loose inside, but I'm doing the photo flow first and then I'm putting it in the salad spinner and I can't put loose film in the salad spinner. So I'm gonna take part of that advice. I'm gonna make a container of photo flow and I'm going to place the spool inside. I just got these and they are wide enough to handle um, they're wide enough to handle a spool. Now what will that mean? That means that it won't be an entirely blind reveal. I'll, I'll be able, that means I'll be able to see at least the first frame when I place it into the container. If you haven't used a magnetic stirrer before, I highly recommend them. I got this one here for like, I think $45 Canadian on Amazon. It just uses a little magnetic pill to stir the contents. The one I'm using now, I got after that ECN2 debacle and it also heats the chemicals. And as I've shown you before, it's a simple matter of getting the pill out with another magnet. And yes, Wharf is my chewy. <laughs> so here's my film in the photo flow. And hopefully we got some good shots, otherwise this is a waste of photo flow. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do as well? I'm gonna make the container specifically just for photo flow. There we go. That way I can wash it separate and I don't have to worry about bubbles in my sink anymore. I don't know why I didn't do this before. I really appreciate the suggestions. Still give it a good shake before the salad spinner. Placing it in the side as suggested. Hey, the film stayed in the spool. I'm gonna give it another whirl. That 
That's fantastic. I really reefed on it that time and it stayed in the spool. So thank you to those who suggested that. Okay, here we go, big reveal. Gotta say, these look beautiful. I'll have a better idea of how these turned out once they dry. You don't have to wait though. Here are today's highlights. Okay, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed those highlights. The photos turned out absolutely fantastic. My theory was correct. One stop over exposed worked for just about every single image. There was only one that was a little bright and it was because of the contrast between the darkest point and the lightest point, like I've discussed before. You may have noticed there was no darkroom montage today, and I don't think I'm going to be doing them anymore moving forward, and I'm going to explain why. I think you'll be happy with the answer. I've been reading your feedback, and the first thing you have to understand is that there's about a three-day delay between the time I'm recording this and the time it goes to public, because I have to edit it, wait for the next day so I can add in the next time, and then I have to give it to my patrons, and they get it about two days early, and then it goes to you guys. So right now, day 10 is what I'm recording. Or sorry, day 9 is what I'm recording. See, I can't even get it right. Day 9 is what I'm recording, but day 6 is what has just been released. Yes, day 6, the Polaroid episode. That's been released to the public today. Day 8 is what has been released to the Kickstarters and the patrons. I, I've just gotten some of your feedback about how you want to see all the photos. And I explained to those of you who showed those concerns that it's a time thing. I can't go in, take the dust off of every photo and show every photo. And then there's the philosophical standpoint that I've already mentioned a couple times that I should be showing my best work. Someone said, why not just show the contact sheet? And you know what? That's not such a bad idea. Showing the contact sheet isn't selling out to my philosophical standpoint. All I've got to do is take a quick photo, a quick snapshot of it, and then invert it if I need to, and toss it up at the end after the highlights. So here's the contact sheet. This is every photo that I took today, and you can see the good and the bad. You can see the duplicate that I took. And in following episodes, I'm going to I'm going to say, here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. And I'll throw it up for, I don't know, 10 or 20 seconds. It'll depend if it's a medium format contact sheet or a 36 shot. But you'll have enough time to sort of glance it over and get an idea of what I shot in between the highlights. It's going to be super quick and dirty, but it gives you a way of seeing my workflow. The other thing that I'm going to do when it's relevant is talk a bit about my editing process starting today. So I'm going to show you a couple examples here. I'm just going to pop them up where I have my initial scan on what my Epson V800 software chose to do for the editing, which is nothing. It looks kind of washed out and there's real, and you can see that there is a magenta cast on my photos. First example here is 
a garage that's painted a bunch of different colors. That's a great example because a lot of primary colors are used. And then you can see here that I've added levels, curves, and I've adjusted the magenta and blue spectrums. So it leaned a little towards the magenta and it leaned a little towards the blue. Here's another example with a red bike set up as a flower pot, for lack of a better term. And this one was a lot heavier in the magenta, and I really had to pull those sliders. And most of the shots did lean towards the magenta, but this one really did. And it's probably because it's in the shade. Yeah, so there you have it. I've got a little, I did a little commentary on how I edited these photos. Again, this is Ektachrome 100 Plus, expired in 2007, non refrigerated. So if you've got a similar or even the same medium format slide film, uh, these are the kind of results you can expect, I think. Give or take, of course. But nothing came out overexposed. Uh, the shadow detail was amazing. They look good. You can see from the contact sheet that they look good. And there goes my light. Yeah, so just to reiterate, in the coming days, I'm not going to be doing the montages in the darkroom anymore, which are fun to do, but they are getting a little monotonous, and they don't really serve any purpose. If you guys are asking me for something I genuinely want to deliver, as long as it doesn't compromise my integrity, I don't think the contact sheet does that. I think it, I think it adds to it. It makes sense. And it shouldn't take me much more time, especially now that I'm not doing the montages, which seriously, they take like an extra hour to do sometimes. So it's all going to work out in the wash. That's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, perhaps you'll consider becoming my patron on Patreon. At the $5 level, you will get to see my videos a day or two early. I also have uh, other tiers, which include a bunch of perks like free prints and the ability to vote on certain things that happen on my channel occasionally, plus relevant updates as they happen. If you don't want to sign up to my Patreon, that's okay too. There are other ways to support this channel. One of the main things that you can do right now is follow me on Instagram at Azrael Knight and head on over to my stories where you can vote which film I shoot each day. When you see this, when the public sees this, you guys should be voting for, man, four days ahead. It's gotta be like day 13 or day 14 or something like that. So I guess that means there's only a few days left to vote on the films that uh, you wanna see on this channel. Um, the films that I don't end up using though, I'll probably end up using in future episodes. So there's that. I release these videos every single day at noon Mountain Standard Time. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's moving along. It's trucking along. Tomorrow is going to be day 10, and it's uh, between Ultra Fine Extreme 100 and Kodak Double X. Thank you again to all your support and comments. I really appreciate it. It's not always easy to hear criticism, but it's definitely necessary. And until tomorrow, stay classic. That looks pretty dark. Don't panic now.